So since we've got some tomato transplants that are going to be ready to go in the ground pretty soon, I figured it'd be a great time to talk about hardening off vegetable transplants. We get What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Thursday, March 21st here in South Georgia and we finally got some room in our greenhouse again. Finally got some room to work in there so we're going to check on our seed starting so far, see how some of those things are doing. We're going to talk about hardening off plants, whether that's something you should do or not and whether we do it. And we're also going to get some more seeds started, some very important seeds. So now that things have warmed up and I don't think we're going to have another frost, I got most of the big fig trees out of the greenhouse and outside here on pallets, which was about like work. Now, it may not look like it, but each one of those little containers there that holds 16 trees weighs about 45 to 50 pounds. And there's about 45 of those out here. So. Whew, pretty wore out, but got them all out here. Still got a little bit of cleanup to do over there, but it looks a lot better than it did. And don't ask me how I fit all these inside that little 10 by 16 greenhouse, because I'm really not sure. I don't think I could get them all back in there if I had to, but where there's a wheel, there's a way, and somehow we made it work a lot more comfortable in there now. Let's go inside and take a look. So you can see in here now, oh, looks a lot better. We got room to walk around. We got room to work. We ain't worried about tripping over everything. Still got some fig trees in here, some that are kind of slow to get going, but we've got room on our benches or our racks in here. And man, I just feel so much better about everything now. Now, before we take a look at our veggie transplants over there, a couple things I wanted to give you an update on that I couldn't earlier because it was so crammed in here. This is a daddle pepper plant that we overwintered in the greenhouse. It didn't have any leaves on it just a few weeks ago, but it has came alive recently and should do pretty good. We might move this puppy outside in a few weeks. And then right here we have this big old brown turkey fig log that we tried to propagate. You might remember when we cut down a majority of that tree with a chainsaw, we saved this log, put some root and hormone on it, put it in this pot, poured wax over the top, and it looks like this may work. Looks like this baby's trying to come alive there a little bit. No big leaves or anything yet, but we got some green buds on there, so I think we may have something here. And as far as our seed starting goes, I had one heat mat going in here. Now that we've got more room, I was able to daisy chain another one to that one. So we've got even more heat mat space. So this is the first tray we started about a month, month and a half ago. All tomatoes here. Some of these got leggy. Some of them we left and they were okay. Now these don't look near as green and healthy as they should right now, but I know why. So as I told you on that last video, those baby fig trees are really, really sensitive to over fertilization. And so I've been using a really, really low rate with my AgriThrive mixed into the watering system. Probably not a high enough rate for these tomato seedlings here because the fig trees look good, but these look like they still need some juice. So I probably need to just get a spray bottle and give these some extra AgriThrive, green them up a little bit. I think they'll be fine once we put them in the ground. They should turn the corner pretty fast, but I would like them to look a little bit bit better before we put them in the ground. Then right here, this blue tray is the second tray we started. A few more tomatoes and then all our peppers. The peppers don't look too bad. Those tomatoes back there look a lot like that first tray I showed you. And then right here, we've got a few of those leggy tomato plants that we stepped up from that first tray. Those are looking decent. Probably could go in the ground with those in the next few days. And then right here, we have those GMO purple tomato seeds that we planted. And I'm starting to get a little bit worried about those purple tomato seeds. They've been planted about a week now. At least a couple of them should have germinated already on the heat mat there. So it may turn out I got everybody worked up for nothing. And then lastly, in this orange tray right here, we've got our watermelons. We've got two seedless varieties, Cracker Jack, Orange Crisp, and then our seeded pollinator. We're using Sangria this year. Instead of doing the saran wrap trick, we used a humidity dome this time, and it worked pretty dang good. 
we've got i don't know around 90 95 percent germination on our cracker jacks those did well these seedless watermelon transplants always look pitiful in the beginning but they'll turn the corner our sangrias back there germinated real well which i expected those aren't hard to get to germinate these orange crisp ones in the middle here not the best germination rate on those maybe i'll end up with five or six good transplants which would be enough to give us a few watermelons but not near as good a germination as we got on the cracker jack so since we've got some tomato transplants that are going to be ready to go in the ground pretty soon i figured it'd be a great time to talk about hardening off vegetable transplants we get a lot of questions about this this time of year when people have their own transplants growing and they're getting ready to put them in the ground outside and if you're new to seed starting or maybe this is your first seed starting i'll explain the process a little bit so hardening off is basically acclimating your transplants to outside you just take them from somewhere where it's nice and mild to outside where the temperatures are swinging a good bit from night and day it might stress the plants a little bit so you want to slowly acclimate them to the outside environment if possible so this hardening off process is very important if you're growing your transplants inside your home in a seed starting room not as important if you're growing them outside in a greenhouse like we are i'll explain more about that in a minute so to harden off your vegetable transplants or get them used to outside conditions you usually want to start one to two weeks before your intended in ground planting date and so initially you just want to move them outside for you know a few hours during the day move them back inside at night and you just gradually increase the amount of time they are outside during the day still moving them inside at night and you basically slowly get them used to being outside if you just take them straight from being inside all the time put them outside it's going to stress those plants a good bit and you don't want that Another good thing to do besides getting them used to the outside temperatures is getting them used to not being watered as frequently. So, you know, about a week, two weeks before you're going to put them in the ground, maybe dial back the watering a little bit. Let that plant get used to not being, you know, babied every single day because likely when you put it in the ground outside, the ground moisture is going to be less than what it's getting inside its cup or tray or container, whatever you're using. So slowly dial back on the water and that plant will be used to it by the time you put it in the ground. Now, personally, I don't really harden off my plants in the spring, and that has a lot to do with the type of greenhouse I have here with the roll-up sides. If I had a completely enclosed greenhouse, I probably would need to harden off the plants, sit them outside the greenhouse a few hours each day before I put them in the ground. But with these roll-up sides here, we can kind of simulate outside temperatures there's been several nights this past week where i've left it rolled up so these babies should be pretty well acclimated so i don't usually harden off my plants in the spring however i do in the fall so for the fall garden we've usually got cabbage broccoli cauliflower brussels sprouts those kind of transplants growing in the greenhouse there and it does stay a little cooler in there in the summer than it is outside because that top gives a little bit of shade in there so if i take those cool season transplants and just throw them outside all of a sudden they're going to be pretty heat stressed so i do slowly acclimate them a lot of times in the fall to those late summer temps we're having around here but i haven't found it to be necessary in spring for me because we've got the greenhouse with the roll-up sites and while we were in here earlier you may have noticed i had one of these prop tech trays already filled with soil already got some indentions in the cells as well now that we've got more room in here i can go back to using these trays which i like just a little bit better than those colorful trays now i mentioned earlier in the video that we're going to be planting some very important seeds today these aren't things we can eat well one of them we can eat but these are things that are going to bring in the beneficial insects, bring in those pollinators that are going to help out the rest of the things in our garden. So first off here, we've got some basil. I always like to plant lots of basil, more basil than we can eat. I do love basil, but I mainly grow basil for the flowers. You get a nice little bed of basil going, just full of flowers. The bees will be all over it. And this year I got this variety called Prospera. 
I don't remember why I picked this variety. I think it had some downy mildew or powdery mildew resistance, something like that. Anyway, I'd never tried this variety, so we're gonna go with that one. And then the rest of what we have here are flowers, and we'll go through them real quick. So I've got one sunflower here. This is a pro-cut white sunflower. Now these pro-cut sunflowers are pollenless, so this won't really help the bees any, but my wife likes these. They're pretty, and that's all that matters, right? Then we have one of my favorite warm season flowers, which is Ageratum, or as a lot of people like to correct me, Ageratum. I'm not really sure how you say it. I call it Ageratum. We grew this tall blue planet variety last year, and it gets a good bit taller than most Ageratum varieties. The, the bees, the other insects really, really like this stuff. So we always plant some Ageratum. Got several varieties of marigolds here. Two I planted last year, giant yellow, white swan and then i've got one called zenith mix i don't remember what this one looks like but the pictures of it look pretty so we went with it those giant marigolds are awesome if you've never grown those those are really fun to grow just kind of plug them in different spots all around your garden and you'll be glad you did and then I've got quite a few different colors of zinnia here, which we love to grow. Some of these are leftover seeds from last year. Some I purchased this year. So we got giant lime, giant coral, queen lime with blush, giant white, giant carmine rose. I don't think I've ever grown that one before. So five or so different colors of zinnias. And so we'll grow these out as transplants. And I don't really have a dedicated spot for them. A lot of times I do do a whole row of zinnias in one of my plots, but I don't really know where I'm gonna put them yet. Sometimes we just kind of plug them in different places around the raised beds and some of our in-ground plots just to add some beauty and also, you know, keep the bees happy. And when you're growing a bunch of different stuff in one tray like we are here it's important to consider which things are going to get up and going fast which things are going to have taller transplants because you don't want some of the little stuff getting shaded out so that's why we put our ageratum and our basil on the end here those seeds usually take a little longer to germinate those transplants take a little longer to be ready to go in the ground then we put our zinnias in the middle and then on the end here we've got our sunflowers and marigolds which usually germinate pretty fast and make a fairly tall transplant so we don't have to worry about those shading out some of these over here we wouldn't want to plant the adrotum and basil in the middle of this tray and so we'll start getting some seeds down here these adrotum seeds are extremely tiny and almost impossible to singulate see there they come in this little there you go maybe you can see how small those are extremely tiny you just kind of do the best you can with these here and thin them out later. And these basil seeds are really tiny too, so almost impossible to just get one seed per cell unless you just want to take all day. I know a lot of people just go buy just a couple basil plants at a big box store or whatever, but I would encourage you to plant more basil than you're going to eat just for the sake of the bees. And it's pretty easy to grow your own basil transplants. Not like some herbs, which can be tricky. Basil's usually pretty easy. So we got those small seeds out of the way. The rest of these have pretty big seeds, so we should be able to get through all these pretty fast. So we got all our seeds dropped there, and it just so happens that I am fresh out of Go Dogs Perlite, so we're gonna have to top them off with some more Go Dogs Pro Mix, which works just fine. I'd rather have the perlite, but I have to go get me some more this weekend. This here got a little wet sitting outside the other night, so it's not quite as fine and easy to sprinkle as it is when it's dry, but we'll make it work. So as you're getting all your spring seed starting done, don't forget about the flowers. It'll keep the bees happy for you married men out there. It'll keep the wife happy if you've got young boys. It teaches them how to go out there and pick some flowers for their mother, which is a very important life skill to have. You don't have to prioritize the flowers over the tomatoes and the peppers, but just make sure you fit them in there somewhere. And also remember, if you're growing your transplants indoors, to slowly acclimate them to the outdoors. Slowly acclimate them to less frequent watering so they're not in shock when you put them in the ground. And if you are an indoor seed starter with experience hardening off plants, please do share your methods or techniques in the comments below. That way the beginner gardeners can read those and learn how to do it themselves. 
And as always, you can find a lot of the products we use around here, including those colorful labels that we're using on our seed tray earlier on our website at lazydogfarm.com. And if you want to know more about our process for getting those seedless watermelons to germinate and all the tips and tricks for that, watch this video and we'll break it all down for you. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.